This is Michael Forster from Clo Cloud. Welcome for joining us for our channel. I am here to talk today in, about July 2023 and the AWS tidbits that we are going to share with you. Okay, let's get started. So first off, I just wanna mention that we're gonna talk about two initial things around generative AI. The first is gonna be about a, a workshop that you can do to learn more about things like SageMaker and ChatGPT, et cetera, et cetera. The other is of course a course that AWS put out in conjunction with Coursera. It's about 16 hours and it lets you dive into generative AI. We're also gonna talk about how to get linked in to version 2.0 of DynamoDB local. So you can actually run DynamoDB on your computer. We're also gonna talk about how CodeBuild now supports GitHub Actions directly. And if you're not familiar with AWS's Carpenter, it's an open source tool, Carpenter with a K, kind of code cloud, that actually is a cluster autoscaler for Kubernetes, and it now supports Windows. We'll also discuss Code Whisperer just briefly, and EKS CTL, which is a tool to create EKS clusters. It's been around for a while, getting some new life in, inside of it. And of course, finally, we're gonna to touch upon ECS and EKS's Fargate, which has a new feature called Soki, which enables faster container startup without modifying the container images. So we've got a lot to cover, so we'll dive right in. If you'll find our content helpful and useful, remember to hit that like button, hit subscribe on our channel, and that allows you to keep up with all the latest AWS news and updates from CodeCloud. Thank you for your continued to support. Let's dive right into the actual slides themselves. Okay, here we are. Let's talk about July 2023 and keeping up with AWS. So here's a few tidbits. Number one, there is a generative AI immersion workshop that AWS has published, right? And it's gonna allow you to get hands-on with generative AI using AWS services. If you haven't seen this thing, it's a work of art. I would dive right in. This is all about generating AI on AWS. You're gonna learn about generative AI, model tuning. You're gonna learn about visual foundation models and engineering Gen AI powered applications. So useful. In almost the exact same vein, we now have a generative AI course that is a collaboration between Coursera and AWS. You can enroll in this for free. It is about 16 hours, so about five hours a week for three weeks. It's at an intermediate level. It's already gotten some rave reviews for those who have taken it. So next one starts August 3rd, which, you know, soon, but you can enroll for the next one if you miss this one, but there it is just in case, okay? All right. Third is you can now deploy DynamoDB version two locally on your computer. Now, I'm not talking about DynamoDB, the service. I'm talking about DynamoDB, the local version. So you may not know, but there's a version one of DynamoDB local that you could run on your laptop for quite some time. This is version two, new version that just came out, runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. It's got updates in the Java space in particular around Jakarta and Spring Boot, but any programming language can now use the DynamoDB APIs to practice and test on your laptop without incurring charges inside of AWS. Click the link if you want to see more. Number four. So you may not be familiar, but we've got Code Star, we've got Code Pipeline, we've got Code Commit, Code Artifact. We've got a lot of code services. But Code Build follows the build portion of the CI CD pipeline, like the build portion of Jenkins. So Code Build has this file called a build spec.yaml, and you can define the build steps that you need to follow for your pipeline inside of that YAML file. CodeBuild now supports the ability to define GitHub actions as steps inside your YAML file. So you can call your GitHub actions from your Git repo and have your GitHub repo execute those actions as part of your code pipeline build. So it's a good integration. It's been out for a few weeks, but it's a good integration between GitHub and AWS CodeBuild. Number five. So Carpenter, which is AWS's open source, like it's under the Apache 2.0 license, Cluster Autoscaler, which means it allows the cluster to grow and shrink depending on what's needed. It is now supports Windows. So it used to just support Linux, which was great, but it basically allowed you to launch right-sized instances so that you could do capacity and performance properly for your applications. It only supported Linux before, now it supports Windows. Check it out if you wanna know more about this Autoscaler. It primarily works with EKS. Number six, Using Code Whisperer for code generation. So if you're not familiar with Code Whisperer, we've covered this before when it hit GA. 
Code Whisperer now uses generative AI to help support and make suggestions and provide context and semantics for your code. Code Whisperer hit general availability a while back, but it's had a few enhancements even since then. So go ahead and hook it into your VS Code, hook it into your favorite IDE, your integrated developer environment if you're not already using it, and see how it functions. Number seven. So EKS CTL is this tool that's been around for a few years now, actually, and you see it a lot in this great workshop called the EKS workshop, which is great if you want to dive in and learn more about Elastic Kubernetes service on AWS. So EKS CTL is this tool where you can either submit some parameters or a YAML file, and you can just command line create clusters on AWS in Kubernetes. It's really great, right? Now it does actually use the EKS service, so don't be fooled. These are not EC2 Kubernetes clusters. These are actual EKS clusters. And so this is a great tool. <clears throat> it's just received some enhancements and now has been lifted up to be very open source and it's in a new repository. So there's a bunch of enhancements to this thing. And so if you haven't seen it, go take a look. It's now available. And last but not least, because notice that we have five weeks of sources here, is that Fargate, which is the kind of serverless service for ECS and for EKS, it now has faster container startup using a technology called Soki, right? And Soki, by the way, think of this as a foreshortened kind of streaming way to send your container images to the environment they're gonna run in, and you can launch them even before all of the data is there. Cool thing about that is that it shortens the startup time for your container images, and you don't have to make any changes to the images. It just optimizes delivery so they can start layers before the other layers have all arrived. Very useful for large container images. Obviously best practices to keep them as thin as possible, but Soki can help if you launch a Fargate version of a container into ECS and EKS. So take a look there as well. So I wanted to keep this short and sweet for you. There's a lot of links here to look at, a lot of things to digest and consume, particularly around generative AI, but also for all of these DevOps -y Version services on AWS. So this entire presentation will be made into a PDF and is available for weeks one through five. All the links are active. As always, if you have any questions, contact us, leave some comments, let us know, and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next update. Thank you.